guys, good morning. So today is fertilizing day at my house. Uh, this is always kind of a big project in early spring to get everything fertilized, get it off to the best start possible. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use and kind of my process and my schedule of fertilizing throughout the year. So today I'm gonna be working on trees, shrubs, and perennials mostly. The only thing I'm not gonna be fertilizing is uh, bulbs because they're coming up right now. All my tulips and daffodils are not blooming yet. Um, but we usually wait until after they're done blooming to fertilize those. And then I don't have any annuals yet, so I won't be doing any annual fertilizing. And then when I plant anything brand new, uh, including my vegetable garden, I always add a starter fertilizer, the Biotone in. So I'm not going to be using that today either. So to fertilize in early spring, you do want to make sure to wait until your plants are actually starting to wake up to where you're seeing little green buds on the branches because that means that your plant is actively starting to grow so it will actually utilize the nutrients that you are putting down for it. If you're to fertilize too early, like when the ground is still frozen, when you're getting a lot of rain, a lot of that fertilizer can be washed away and it's kind of a little bit of a waste. So you do want to make sure to like wait until it's a good time. So right now, we're getting toward the end of March. Everything in my garden is starting to come alive. It's a great time of year. So I'm actually starting kind of in the front corner of our house. I have my wagon all loaded up with goodies. So let me show you what I'm using today. So I've got all my tones here that I'm using today. I've got holly tone, which I'll be using mostly on evergreens. Rose tone, obviously for roses and any flowering shrubs. Plant tone, I'll be using for like foliage type perennials. So hostas and things like that. Rose tone, I'll also be using on flowering perennials. And then tree tone for any of my smaller trees. We typically don't fertilize big trees unless they're having a problem. We do work with Espoma quite a bit. Um, and I've been using their stuff in my garden for years. In my old garden, in this garden, my parents have been using it for as long as I can remember. It does have a smell. Uh, in fact, I would be a little suspect of a fertilizer that didn't have a smell. Um, usually that means it's full of really good stuff. Uh, it does not last for very long. So you apply it, get it watered in, and it pretty much goes away within a day or two. And I love that it's organic because it's a slow feed and you really cannot hurt your plants with it. You can't overdo really. Um, I do use this very highly scientific measuring device right here. This measures out about two cups-ish. Um, so I try to get it fairly close, but if you're a little under or a little over on your dosage, you don't have to worry about it with these because they won't burn anything. And one thing that like term that I thought I would throw out there is a drip line um, because I see it on a lot of different fertilizing bags and things like that. You you want to put your fertilizer around the drip line of the plant, not necessarily right around the trunk. So let me show you. So here's a cute little spruce I planted last summer. This is a Sherwood Compact Norway spruce. It'll grow about 15 feet tall, eight feet wide. The drip line of the root system falls where the outermost branches kind of come out. So when you apply your fertilizer, you don't put it right in at the trunk. You put it in kind of a circle right underneath where those branches are because the drip line is where the most active roots are. And where the most active roots are, those are the roots that will take up the fertilizer the best. So anyway, I thought I would throw out that term. Um, other than that, I just follow the instructions on the back of the bag. Um, so most bags that you look at will tell you what to give, whether or not they're like new plantings or established. Um, or if you're actually like treating a whole garden bed. Um, so let me show you that as well. I also realized they actually have a little picture of the drip line. So see that? See how the outermost leaves kind of fall here? That's where the drip line of your plant is. And then it gives you all the instructions. So for the evergreen tree I planted last year, I would say it's not necessarily a new planting because it's been in the ground for a year. It's not like super established, but that's the instructions I'm gonna follow here. So for trees, you do one pound, three cups per inch of trunk diameter. Um, so for this one, it's got a really small trunk. So I will probably just do like treat it like it has a one inch trunk diameter. So I'm gonna be applying three cups around the drip line. I've got a glove up real quick. So that's about two cups. So I'll have to come back for a little more, but just check this out. In fact, let me set the camera up a little bit better here. So that's what it looks like right there. You can go in and scratch it in if you want, just so that you don't see that line of fertilizer. But all you have to do is water it in after that and you're done. So let me show you another example. I have a perennial grass back here. This is a beauty, you guys. It's called totem pole. 
and it gets really tall. I'm really excited to see it grow in this area. But you can see that this one's a lot smaller and I'm gonna use a different fertilizer for it. So we're gonna go with plant tone for the grass and I already checked the instructions and it says to use about one cup per plant. Now we can expect big things from that grass this year. Also, if you have landscape fabric in your beds, it's ideal if you can get down there and kind of lift it up to toss your fertilizer in around the drip line. That way it'll act just like if you didn't have landscape fabric, the fertilizer will reach the roots. If you can't do that and you've got like rock mulch over the top of your landscape fabric, just put the fertilizer around the base of the plant. It will reach the root system and it's better than not fertilizing. So basically, this is what my day looks like. I'm just going to be running around trying to get as much of this done as I can. I am a little bit ahead though because I already went through the garden and fertilized all of our hydrangeas and I'm trying out something different this year. So it was recommended to me by one of the growers we work with to use the rose tone instead of holly tone, which is what I've always used in the past. So I'm excited to see how they react to the rose tone. And one other thing I did want to mention is that we recently did a video about perlite versus vermiculite and kind of the differences there, just kind of more of an educational video. Um, and there was a lot of comments in the um, comment section about wanting to know more about fertilizers and and like the differences of all of these and why we use specific fertilizers for specific plants. So I think we're gonna be addressing more of that this year and I'm hoping that will be helpful. So anyway, I'm just gonna start fertilizing. I'm gonna start with this area, get this all finished and then we'll move on to the next. a flower bed like this one that's just chock full of blooming perennials that are just kind of starting to pop through the ground a lot of times I'll just take my uh, little container full of rose tone and I'll just kind of sprinkle it around the plants I don't really measure I just make sure that everything's got at least a little bit of fertilizer because I don't know about you guys but there is no way I am gonna traipse through this bed and try to fertilize every individual perennial that's popping up in the ground that would take me forever. Well I've made it around two sides of the house so far so I feel like I am kind of getting through this pretty quick but I have this whole line of North Pole Arborvitas behind me. There are 65 of them all together. We planted them two years ago just about it'll be like two years right in the middle of summer and they've done super super well but we've been really diligent with the fertilizing but i wanted to mention that for arborvitas and boxwoods you should use plant tone rather than holly tone even though the holly tone bag says it's for evergreens because the arborvitas and boxwoods just react better to the plant tone so i thought i would mention that before i start fertilizing and for this type of i'm calling these shrubs um, because they're not they're not really big trees yet. You do one cup of the plant home per every foot of branch di of uh, diameter of the shrub. And these are about two feet or so, maybe a little bit bigger than two feet. So I'll do like a heaping two cup worth for every single tree. is done which always feels really good that seems like it's the biggest project of fertilizing on our property but I do want to talk about you can see right behind me there are containerized juniper topiaries so what do you do with the shrubs and perennials and things that you hold over in pots well there are instructions on the back of the bag that tell you to give him one teaspoon of fertilizer for every three inches of pot diameter which these are about 20 inches so I'm gonna go at about seven teaspoons and you just sprinkle it around the edge of the pot and water it in so let's go do that and with these I'm going to be using the holly tone because they are junipers not arbs or boxwoods so I'm kind of eyeballing this I've got about what I think is close to what I need and so you just sprinkle it right along the exterior of the pot like so and just one more pinch for good measure 
And then let's go grab the hose and water it in. And these will have been living in these containers, I think for, maybe this is their third season. I don't know, they've done really, really well right here. And it's pretty much the same instructions for whatever fertilizer you're using. If you have a rose in a pot or perennials, you do the um, one teaspoon for every three inches of pot diameter. And now these right here, I'm actually gonna be underplanting here in probably the next couple of months. I'll be planting them for summer. Um, so right now they have a really good spring feed and they can kind of get going. And then once I plant my annuals, I will be coming in with annual fertilizer and uh, fertilizing on a weekly basis. So these will continue to get food all season long, but in containers, it's just different different because um, you're watering so often that you are moving nutrients through that soil so fast um, and plants are taking you know annuals are such um, heavy feeders that they utilize so much of the food that it's okay for these plants to have that much and the last thing I want to show you is just another good example of perennial so let's head to another area of the garden all right here we are so you might remember this area we planted this up last year um, and I have a ginger wine nine bark right back there which I will be using some plantone on then I've got some of the Stand By Me Clematis that are in between all of these little um, stakes right here. I cannot wait to see it grow. Well, you can already see it's already putting on some spring growth, which is super exciting. And then I have orange smoothie daylilies that ring the whole front side of this bed. And as we swing over later on in the season, I planted six Atlast roses in here and another North Pole Arborvita to kind of fill up this corner section. So this is the area where I just wanted to show you perennial fertilizing. So I've got my rose and flower food here. So what I do is just come in again and sprinkle some right around the drip line of the plant, just like that. And so I'm gonna be doing that in this entire bed. That's what it should look like after you're done fertilizing. You can see all the rings of lighter colored fertilizer around each of the plants until it's all watered in. So that's pretty much all there is to fertilizing. I still have some left to do in the garden, but I'm just gonna work on it for the rest of the day. Hopefully I'll get it all done. Um, like I said, the only thing I won't be fertilizing today are bulbs um, because I'll wait till they're done flowering to do that. And then of course annuals because I really don't have much for annuals out. And I don't really fertilize my spring pots because they're so short lived. I'll wait until I pot them out in the landscape. Um, like the things, the bulbs and uh, violas and stuff that I have in there that are perennial. When I put them in the garden, I will fertilize them with the Biotone starter fertilizer at that time and really the only plant I avoid not fertilizing is sedum um, so if you have any um, like perennial sedum like especially the upright type they do not prefer to be fertilized they actually like really really crummy soil um, so I just avoid those altogether and there's really nothing else that I stay away from and as far as my schedule goes for the rest of the year in terms of fertilizing for trees shrubs and perennials I do them early spring um, like we did today and then I'll follow up maybe midsummer on some of my blooming perennials because typically they've gone through their first bloom cycle I'll cut them back and then I'll go in and give them a little bit more fertilizer so it gives them a little oomph for the next bloom cycle and then everything else I wait until late summer early fall I just make sure that it's uh, far enough before the first frost to where if they uh, push any new growth it has time to acclimate and it's not going to get damaged by any wintertime temperatures so that's it guys I hope this video was helpful and we do plan on coming out with some videos just talking more specifically about each one of the fertilizers and kind of going into detail a little bit more um, so be looking for those thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye